Right, we're going to repeat um, an earlier video for the FX uh, 7500 on the 9600. It's the same operating system, the same firmware update we're going to do. And the process again of using uh, 123 desktop RFID or whatever they, 123 RFID, uh, which is a desktop application. I, <clears throat> again, for this kind of thing, I, I, I don't use it. I, I find that it's a little bit buggy for connecting to hardware from time to time. So it's just a far easier approach to connect by looking at the label that is on the side uh, or on the underside, it could be on the side or the underside of the you know, 9600. And that you can put into uh, a URL, just HTTP colon slash slash, and then in this case, FX 9600, and then the last three pairs of the um, 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 this is serial number, presumably the MAC address, but it could be wrong. Anyway, our uh, admin username has the password of change, lowercase. And once you log in, um, sorry, I think I'm, there we go. Now you'll see the reader software version needs to be upgraded. And the other thing was is that we were using an unencrypted URL. And there are changes with this new firmware that will make uh, some improvements in security here. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Now this reader probably has been used elsewhere, so I'm going to make sure that if it does have any applications like this one, I'm going to go ahead and uninstall it. I could just go ahead and uh, um, and stop it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and just remove it uh, completely. Same thing with communication. Make sure that this thing is set up. Right now, DHCP is set off. I'm going to turn it on so that it works in my uh, environment a little bit easier. And now we go down to uh, firmware, update. And we pick file based. We go out and we browse to the downloaded folder for that firmware. Open it up and select everything. And now you'll see 13 files selected. I'm going to hit start update and then I'll probably pause and let this do its thing while we're waiting for that to happen. Okay. There we go. I was going to show this because it appears that uh, the process crashed halfway through. The reader, when it's undergoing a firmware update, will uh, flash red um, on the LED, <clears throat> uh, one of the LED, four LEDs anyway. And as it goes through these erasing and writing processes, you might see it actually go to yellow, and then it should uh, go finally to solid green. Well, I'm still in the midst of uh, writing a file and it's showing full green and it's been stuck here for a while. So we're going to abort this. Uh, I know it says not to, but we're going to abort it and we're going to start over again <clears throat> and see if we can't figure out what we might have done wrong here. So uh, here's my home page. I will type in change again in lowercase. I will go down to firmware update, and we will restart that process again of selecting all these files. I don't think we actually need the text files, but it really shouldn't matter. Hit OK, and hit Start. And I'll see if this actually goes through this time without, um, without crashing again. Okay, this time it went through, and again, the light sequence is you'll have a blinking red light as it's doing a firmware update. Uh, when it's finally done, and you see a notification that it's going to be reboot, that red uh, blinking light will switch to white, and it will stay, I believe, solid white uh, while it's doing the re reboot process, which can take one to two minutes. Then as it starts to boot up again, you'll see it go to green, and there might be a flashing red light for a while, but finally it goes solid green, and you're done. So uh, we're done. Let's go back in and hit change. Uh, lowercase is our password. Hit login, and <clears throat> now you can see that we've confirmed that we have a new firmware level here. I'm going to hit log out, and I'm going to log in again. And this time, with using change, it should come back and say something about um, 
you can't use that password anymore. At least I was hoping it would. Um, I guess what I need to do is completely, here, I'm gonna go look at this. Oh, there it is. It's, there's my new IP address. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna close my browser, restart it again. And this time I'll put in the IP address rather than the label uh, information. So come back here. Now we'll hit change, log in, and uh, yes, I want to override that. And now it's giving me this new message about, hey, you got to be in the secure mode. And I'm going to say, okay, right? <clears throat> and uh, I have to go back up here and change this to, I guess, I guess I, Formally have to put in HTTPS colon slash slash and there's my IP address hit advanced hit accept risk and now when I type in change it should prompt me to alter that um, that password okay which it does and I'll put in the old password of change and then now I'll put in a new password and again you've got some rules over the right side as to what the restrictions are, read them, do what you wish for your own password, of course. And I will hit change password. Should come back. And just to test it, I will do, in fact, I will uh, make sure I can read some things here. So read tags and let's see, maybe I need to Click here to add self-aligned certificate to browser. Very interesting. <clears throat> and we'll do that again. There we go. Now hit read, hit start, and there's some tags. Okay, so we have um, updated the firmware. We have gone through, taken off uh, in communication. We set the Ethernet to DHCP so that we can get an IP address. If you know what you want it to be statically, you certainly um, changes DHCP to off and configure it that way. Then log out, log back in with that um, IP address in your browser. And it should now um, you should add HTTPS colon slash slash. When you try to log in, it'll ask you to change your password and thereafter you should be done. Just to prove that, I'm going to log out. I'll log back in. There we are. Up here, I have a secure connection. Uh, I have my password changed and I still have full functionality to test reading tags, go further to configure the reader for whatever else I want to do. I find this doing things to the home page so much faster uh, than downloading some application and putting it on the desktop. Now, I will in another video go through some of the advantages that are built into the 123RFID desktop app, but configuration is not one of my uh, preferences. I'd rather do it through the home page.